I've tried making several videos about this. The last one I put on Unlisted, the one before that, I was really depressed, more depressed than I've been since, like, I don't know, I hadn't been that depressed since 2013, and I put that one on private. Few people saw it, though. Um, I'm doing a little better, or maybe I'm just dealing with it a little better. Um, but there needs to be more people to speak against what is being seen on BuzzFeed and MTV, sometimes even MSNBC and sometimes CNN. This extremism that resides within the progressive movement. This extremism is starting to receive a pushback that I think that these anti-gay laws that have been put into place in several states now, I think one of them was to the point where uh, medical coverage could be denied to someone if the person that, if the doctor or nurse doesn't want to help uh, serve gay people, then uh, they don't have to, you know. Um, but this backlash is a result of what this type of extremism is doing. When people are being turned into the enemies, who are people that are supportive of minorities, supportive of women, supportive of gay people, supportive of racial minorities, supportive of, of transgender people, supportive, but they're not marching lock and step with, with certain ideas. They're being demonized. They're being turned into the enemy. They're being labeled as the oppressors. We're being told that uh, if you're not oppressed, then you're an oppressor. We're told that the oppressed cannot become oppressors. We're told that history can't repeat itself in that way. It can only repeat itself in exactly the same way as it did before. You know, I've talked about ACT UP a number of times. Uh, ACT UP, it was, it's a, uh, uh, initially an AIDS activist uh, organization. Uh, that was very uh, prolific in the 90s. And to me, most of what they did was alienate people. They went to such extremes that they did the opposite of what they were going out to achieve. And there are a number of people say, well, look at all the change that happened. Well, it's not because of them. The change that happened because of, well, they brought awareness to the people who were already on their side. You don't get awareness by preaching to the choir and demonizing everyone else. You get awareness by talking with the people who disagree with you, by trying to get those who disagree with you to see some things. I guess rallying the crowd, rallying the choir might have some sort of advantage, but when it's at the cost of alienating everyone who isn't already part of that choir, you know, it's messed up. So like. You know, I've talked about this many times, but I'm going to say the story again because it's just, it hit me so hard. Uh, is when there was similar anti-gay legislation going through here in Washington State in the early 90s. Some friends of mine and I went to one of the planning meetings at the Lakewood Mall, which is no longer the Lakewood Mall, it's now the Lakewood Town Center. They took down the mall section. Um, and they were going to talk about this anti-gay legislation that had that had the label of uh, a religious freedom act. Um, 
And so we're there at the meeting, and there's this speaker trying to prop it up like it's some beautiful thing. And so we ask some pointed questions that eventually had the speaker stopping it. Well, it doesn't say that anywhere. Well, yeah, it says it right here, and we read it off. Well, that's not what it meant. And we're like, yeah, but that's what it's going to do. And we had some people in the audience really starting to question things, because people in the audience were under the impression that it was what the speaker was pushing it out to be. We were getting people, you know, educated on this stuff just by, you know, asking these questions and having the speaker, you know, say what he was saying. And then ACT UP barges into the room and goes, you should all be ashamed of yourselves. You're just a bunch of bigots. Shame, shame. And they, they every time they took a step, uh, they said the word shame, circled the whole room, and it took a couple minutes. And by the end of that, the speaker was smiling uh, ear to ear because he knew that uh, the stuff that my friends and I had come in um, to ask questions about was all in vain. It was all toast. And that sort of thing is what has taken over progressivism in the past five years. It's completely taken it over. There was a period where I was saying that, well, you know, it can't really do that much harm. It can't really do that much. Uh, those people who are pushing that aren't in office. Well, that may be true, but I was wrong about how much damage that they could cause. I really didn't want to believe it. So now we've got this backlash happening with these anti-gay bills. People want to take these extremes in, in the progressive movement, they want to, do, want to take these extremes and gay people and trans people are paying for it the most dearly first. And I say first because I don't think the Republicans will be done. When, when, when it gets there, they're not going to be done. See, here's the problem with this, this, these, these progressive ideals, not the ideals, but the progressive, the people that are pushing forth progressive ideals, okay? You're never satisfied. You can't be satisfied that people are more accepting. You can't be satisfied that there's more tolerance. You can't be satisfied with that. You have to go and demonize everyone who doesn't march lock and step with you. And you have to claim that people are oppressors, even if they're working hard at trying to spread the word themselves about, um, about tolerance. No, it's, it's never good enough. Everyone is your enemy unless they march lock and step with you. And so we've got these, we've got these religious shitbags, these religious fucktards in the Republican Party pushing forth this stuff and when people say, you know, why are you doing this? They say, well, look what we're up against. And they just have to point at MTV, uh, they have to point at, uh, at BuzzFeed, MSNBC, C uh, CNN, and a whole shit ton of websites. They can point at the people, the biggest names in progressivism. And uh, they just point there, well, look what we're up against. There are very few people who call themselves progressive, call themselves liberal, call themselves uh, uh, democratic socialists, there are very few people speaking against this, this ridiculous way that some of, some of progressivism has gotten uh, with, with some people. And yet, here's, what, here's what's really, really the kicker on it. Here's what's really the kicker on it, is some of these same people speaking against the, uh, that are actually speaking against this progressivism, the way that it's become, will sit there and push forth that Islam is more of a threat than these religious fucktard Republicans. That Islam is somehow more of a threat. Oh, creeping Sharia. You fucking kidding me? 
Muslims don't have shit for power. You know? The, the things that, that, that the Muslims tend to be doing has to do with, oh, well, you want a job and still wear this, this headscarf thing. You know, you want to push your, you want to visually show that you're religious no matter where you are, no matter where you're working. Oh no, you want to have halal meat, which is exactly the same as, as kosher meat. Oh no, creeping Sharia, no, bullshit. We, the people that have power, will, will use that power if they are shoved in a corner. And that's what's happened. Republicans who normally would have been supportive of gay people and trans people and minorities of all types have been pushed into a corner because they are basically labeled as shitlord, cis, white, uh, privileged males. Check your privilege. We are made to feel bad just because we happen to fit a demographic. Oh, but the, 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 the ones who study sociology and turn it into a set of dogma, turn it into an ideology, they say that the oppressed can never become the oppressors. Crock of shit. Most people know this is a crock of shit. And this is why, in some other videos, in like when, when, I mean, TJ, it's interesting to me that, that TJ, Amazing Atheist, changed some of the nature of some of his videos more recently, where he's really, really speaking about some important shit. He's talking about what he does support. And that, that just kind of blew my mind. I, some, some, I somewhat wonder whether I might have had something to do with it. Probably not, but... Uh, that's why I feel it's important. If someone is to speak against what these social justice warriors, this new progressivism is doing, they also need to speak about what it is they do support to show everyone that it's not just the right wing that is saying bad things about this. You know, these right wing fucktards, as I said, are able to just point their finger and say, well, look what we're up against and look at all the people that support us. And people wonder why I was finding it so important to, to shove forth the things you do support as well as the things that you don't support. Because people will assume you are on their side. People will assume this. Oh, well, assume makes an ass of you and me. Well, that's tough, that's the way it goes. People will assume. And right now, because of this shit, gay people, trans people, probably soon uh, racial minorities are going to be paying the price for the stupidity of what some of this progressivism has become because of these stupid SJWs, because of these people who turn anyone who doesn't march lock and step with everything they say, no matter how messed up it is, as the enemy, as the oppressors. This shit has me depressed. It does. This shit has me really depressed. Because we're not going, we haven't seen the end of these, of states pushing this shit forth. We haven't seen the end of it. It's gonna continue.